This video is a bit of a mishmash of topics here that all sort of surrounds the core topic of the electric potential of a point charge. So just a few things to talk about here. So what we have here is a single point charge here or a single sphere of charge here that has a charge Q on it. So about all we know about it now from uh, previous videos and things about the, the point charge fills the entire universe around it with, a, with its electric field line. So these are the E field lines and it's a positive charge. And so the electric field lines are going to point away from the charge like this, always away from the charge, something like that. Uh, so that's sort of the model that we have here, and we even have the equation for that. We know that the electric field due to a point charge is kq over r squared. So that's the equation for the electric field due to a point charge. But if we want to talk about the electric potential now, which is sort of what this series of videos is about, we can replace that point charge in the same spot. We'll go like, if we start asking about the electric potential, what we'd like to know now is, well, if we were right here, what is the electric potential that we'd measure? And by that I mean if we actually got out a good old voltmeter like this and we started placing these probes in a space around the charge like this, like what would we get if we measured right here and right here? There's always sort of this bizarre issue about where do we put the other lead when measuring these types of potentials here. And if you read your textbook, you always put this lead very, very far away, like way off the screen to infinity. So we wouldn't even put it here or here. We just put it way off. So here we go. I'm taking this thing. I'm putting it way out to infinity. Get out of the way. So we just have this one singular probe. We start looking around like this and this and this and this, and we want to know what would the volt, <coughs> what would the voltmeter read? If you're taking this class in university, there's a laboratory that you often do where you have a bunch of black paper that you would just match that out, map that out rather. So in this case here. Actually, what we would realize then is that it's also going to be a symmetric system here. So what we kind of expect is that if we sort of stay the same radius from this point charge here, we would get the same voltage, and indeed that's even true. So it turns out that for a point charge like this, circles that go around the charge sort of symmetrically like that are all at the same potential, something like this. So for instance, for this point charge right here, this whole black line here might be at 10 volts of potential. And as it get further away, what you might expect is the, the potential would drop, and indeed it does, because the zero potential is way out in infinity where that black lead is right here. So maybe by the time you get up to here, the potential is 5 volts. Maybe by the time you get here, the potential is 1 volt, something like that. So what that means is if you take the voltmeter lead and put it everywhere on this black circle here, you'll get 10 volts. Everywhere on this black circle, you'll get 5 volts. Everywhere on this black circle, 1 volt. And of course, the circle in between these everywhere may be 2.5. And, and the circle in between the 10 and the 5 might be something like 7.5. If you get really close to the charge, like maybe a circle way in here or all the way around, maybe it will be up to 100 volts or something. But that's, there is an electric potential set up by a point charge in all space around it. And as you might guess, or maybe your teacher told you, you can see in your textbook here, there is a relation between electric field lines and potential lines. In particular, if I just go ahead and superimpose the two, so let's go ahead and draw the potential lines, the equal potential lines, that is, over here like this. They're always perpendicular to the electric field lines like that. So that's sort of a relation between them here. And again, these lines over here are the equi potential lines, or lines of equal potential. And we even have an equation for that that predicts it. Turns out that the potential due to a point charge is just kq over r. So we even have two equations going on. kq over r squared for electric field. And also remember that electric field is a vector, so there's that r hat in there. But potential is not a vector. It doesn't have the r squared in it either, just kq over r. And that's the electric potential due to a point charge. So the k, and if you know how much q, the, here's the, the dependence on r right here. So it doesn't matter how far you are from the charge, but if you're at some constant radius, as all these circles are, then you will measure the same potential all the way around like that. So it's sort of a nice little formula to have around. So the next thing we'd like to say about that is how does superposition work? Remember, superposition, we did that for E fields, has to do with what happens maybe if you have more than one charge and the potential starts to add, which is actually quite interesting and quite baffling how simple it becomes because it's something like this. Suppose we had a square of charges like this. So there are these three charges like this. Let's say they're oriented on a square like this. Maybe let's get some other color in here to um, orient ourselves with the square. Let's say this side here is side D. This side here is D. And if those are both d and this is a square, then this side here is to be the square root of 2 times d. So sort of a Pythagorean theorem in there. It looks like this marker really isn't uh, holding up too well. Maybe get that to show up a little bit better here. This side here is d. This side here is d. There's your d. There's your d. And the square root of 2 times d. So there we go. Something like that. And so the other question is, what would the potential be right here at this point? Like what would v be right there? Now, you look at it and go, oh, I remember doing these. These are like the superposition of electric fields. So it is and it isn't. But remember that this electric field here 
is strictly a scalar quantity. There's no vectorness about this. So if you want to know what the electric potential is right here at this point, you would just add them up due to the other points. So we, I'm just going to write the answer almost in one line. The potential I'd get then at this point here is the potential because of this point, which is a distance d away. So this can be kq over d plus, well, there's another point here, which is distance d away, plus another kq over d, no problem there, plus how far this charge is away from it, which is kq over square root of 2 times d. That's the answer. So we're all done there. It's almost the easiest thing because the potential is just add like that. So again, if I took a voltmeter and put the probe right here, so here's this voltmeter right here sitting here like this. There's the voltmeter right there. The black lead goes very far away to infinity, which is where we call our zero voltage reference, way off at infinity like that. Kind of a hard concept to grasp, but we'll just go with it for now. And if I take the red lead and plug that into the voltmeter and I want to reference this point right here, this is what it would read. So all the voltmeter does is sort of analyze all the space around it or whatever sort of might go on in there and tells you what the potential is, but just strictly a pure scalar superposition. Here's this charge, here's this charge, here's this charge, and that's the answer right there. So the superposition becomes just incredibly easy when you're dealing with uh, scalar potential because there is no vectors in there. So we'll leave that as it, as it goes right now. We'll just look at one last thing in this video, which is related to... Some other work we did with superposition of electric fields, but we'll sort of go through it a bit quicker now, is suppose then that we had a continuous distribution of charge, and we want to know what the potential was due to that. So here's a line charge. And let's say the line charge has a bunch of positive charges on it like this. And we want to know what the potential is right here at this bisector above the line. So say the line goes from L over 2 on that side to minus L over 2 on this side, and we're at the bisector right there. Okay, so one thing that you notice about this is it's not a point charge. So the answer up here at the voltage at that point right there is not going to be, V is not going to be KQ over R. Okay, that's for a point charge. This is not a point charge. It's a line. So what we have to do then is do the usual tricks that we sort of discussed when we are talking about the superposition of electric fields is we have to discretize the problem. We'll take a little sliver there, a little DQ, which has a width DX like that, and we're going to go, well... It behaves like a point charge, so the, the differential voltage contributed at this point here is going to be the constant K times the different, differential amount of charge that's in this little sliver right here over R, where, of course, that's R right there. And notice I'm not drawing an arrow here or anything like that because the voltage is not a potential. It doesn't point in any direction, so I'm not going to draw an arrow. It's not an electric field line. This is just an arbitrary geom geometrical line I need uh, so I can fill in something for R there. And maybe my DQ that holds this dx here is going to be a distance x from the uh, vertical axis right there. And so guess what? To finish up this problem here, all I have to do is add all these little dvs together. Because again, as we discussed before, there'll be a little sliver here, and a little sliver here, and a little sliver here, and a little sliver over here, and a little sliver here. This is just one representative sliver, but I've got to add them all up. And so, of course, when I say add for a con continuous distribution, the sum here really becomes an integral. So we do have an integral to do, but watch how quickly the answer comes between us here. So V will be K times DQ, and R is always the distance between the sliver and the point of question here, which from Pythagorean theorem is it's going to be X squared plus H squared. So we'll just say we're a height H above the raw there. Shouldn't be a problem there. A lot of familiar concepts in this. And notice also, contrasting with the electric field, it's just an R on the bottom, not an R squared. So if this was an electric field problem, the square root would be gone, but not so here. And also I know from maybe the electric field bit here that dq is going to be lambda times dx, where lambda here is the charge density of this line. So a lot of familiar concepts. Let's go ahead and fill that in. It's going to be k times lambda dx over square root of h, x squared plus h squared, something like that. This is sort of the equation I'm left with. And now the very last step is to recognize that v is the integral of dv. And because this quantity... Electric potential and voltage is all a scalar. There's no vectors. There is not an integral for the x or an integral for y. There's just one integral because the integral here, remember, which is really like an infinite sum, just says add them all up together. And because they're scalars, they're happy to add very easily here. So the voltage then uh, is just going to be, let me pull the k out and the lambda out because they're constants. It's going to be the integral of dx over the square root of x squared plus h squared. And the limits of integration will be the limits of the rod minus L over 2 to L over 2. I'll just sort of leave you to do the integral. I believe this one involves a big natural logarithm, but you can look that up in your textbook or use Wolfram Alpha or Mathematica or something like that. But that's where the integral would be, and it's very short and simple. You discretize, you fill in the R, 
you fill in the charge density, then you just integrate the thing. No vectors, no sines, no cosine, no any of that. Nice and simple. And that will give you the equation for the potential that you would get. A voltmeter would read if it was you placed the lead right there above the rod. So again, here's the voltmeter. Here's the black lead, which is over at infinity, where V is equal to zero. It's way off there. That's our zero reference point, sort of like the end of the yardstick that is on the ground when we're measuring electric or uh, gravitational potential energy for a ball. Take the positive lead and put it right there. What is it going to read because of this charge, which is down here? Well, I don't know, but it's going to read the answer that you get here in volts. So there's a bit of uh, ideas for you here on the electric potential that sort of stems from a point charge that we can even extend to an extended system like a rod like that.